Last September, with overwhelming public support, the city of Chattanooga voted to build a fiber to home network. Many Chattanoogans know the benefits fiber could bring. A smart electric grid that could help save energy and money, increased economic development, critical services to rural areas, and faster, more reliable communications. Since the vote passed, we've heard a lot from cable lobbyists about what is good for Tennessee. But what is the real story on Chattanooga's fight for fiber? Tennessee Cable and Telecommunications Association, the cable company's lobbyist, claims that building a fiber to home infrastructure will drive away economic development from Chattanooga, harm local companies and deter investment. And in a letter to Chattanooga City Council members, the cable lobbyists say that the project will discourage instead of attract investments in economic development. But here's what Chattanoogans know. We are growing faster than I can keep up with the business. Um, we have a lot of clients constantly calling wanting to be on our network. So we grow very rapidly and we're making Chattanooga a center for radio radiological expertise and interpretation. Reliable, affordable broadband is really something that any company, whether they exist in Chattanooga today or they're looking to move, this kind of broadband would be key in keeping those businesses in Chattanooga over the long haul. Chattanoogans aren't the only ones talking about the economic opportunities of a fiber-to-home infrastructure. The New York Times recently reported that the decision to build Google's new billion-dollar information age factory in rural Oregon was leveraged by the fiber connectivity offered by their public utility, which in turn created 1,000 new jobs. And in a recent study, MIT found that fiber broadband networks have the potential to create 1.2 million new jobs in the U.S. For Tennessee, that means 20,000 new jobs and $10 billion in additional gross domestic product. The cable lobbyists claim that a fiber optic smart grid would provide no benefit to electric customers. There's no electric need on the system. $167 million for efficiencies for the electric system is it, it, outrageous. And what they intend to do with those bonds is to build their network, their fiber optic network, which we don't think they need to be doing anyway, but that fiber optic network um, does nothing for the electric system other than provide potentially some electric efficiencies. But here's what Chattanoogans know. A smart grid which uses advanced communications to improve efficiency, reduce outages, and manage energy usage is in everyone's best interest. The Electric Power Research Institute has validated Chattanooga's projected smart grid, commending EPB for making a key strategic decision and estimating a $300 million value to its electric customers over 10 years. And just last year, the United States House and Senate allocated millions of dollars to help communities across the country build smart grids to better meet demand for now and the future. The cable lobbyists claim that it just doesn't make sense to serve rural areas, telling Chattanoogans that providing services to one remote home is not worth the cost. But here's what Chattanoogans know. We know that everyone should have access to critical services, like high-speed broadband, that many rural areas just aren't being provided. We know that fiber broadband access is vital for growth and economic development, and that Tennessee's rural residents should not be left behind. The cable lobbyists claim there is no real demand for high-speed broadband in Chattanooga. There's not really a lot of demand for any higher speed at this point. They say the need for second-generation broadband is not there, and that Chattanoogans should be satisfied with being not far behind. We are not far behind in the broadband world. We're not far behind in the video world. But here's what Chattanoogans know. Municipalities in Tennessee are seeing higher than expected demand for second generation broadband, with take rates as high as 60%. And not only is there demand for high speed broadband in Tennessee, there's increasing demand around the world. But with the US ranking just 15th in the world for broadband access, it's fast becoming a race of who's ahead and who's behind. We are not far behind in the broadband world. We're not far behind in the video world. So, as Chattanooga's fight for fiber continues, no matter what the cable lobbyists claim, we know not far behind is not good enough for Tennessee. <laughs>